<laughs> Suck it, WCW. You thought you had him. And now he's off to movies. The fuck's he doing in a musical, though? to episode 20 but from then to now the TEW 2020 save where we take the World Wrestling Federation from 1992 and we try and get to the modern era it's a fun little save I love this save at the moment and we've got the first superstars post Saturday night's main event officially if you haven't watched the Saturday night's main event episode yet go and watch it it's a great little card but I'm going to be spoiling it in 3, 2, 1. Bret Hart retained his IC title. And Hogan and Warrior beat the Horseman. With Yokozuna beating down Max Moon. After he loses to John Nord. And Brute Camp Block A defeated Block B. When Glenn Jacobs pinned uh, Duke Drozzi. Now, things that have been announced for this episode of Superstars. We've got the return match for High Voltage. We've got Hulk Hogan versus Terry Gordy. Ric Flair versus the British Bulldog. And Yokozuna versus Max Moon. It's a pretty fun episode, if you ask me. We're taking place in the Summit in the Mid-South Gets a 16,000 capacity. We're expecting to sell most of it, if not all of it. I'm looking forward to it, though. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for constant TEW 2020 content. And let's get into this show. And we kick things off with the ring announcer, who would be Harold Finkel, but we don't actually have him in this mod. I don't know why. So we're doing Vince McMahon. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest is a 20-man battle royale for a shot at the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship. The rules are as followed. 20 men will start in the ring. You are eliminated when you are thrown over the top rope and both feet hit the ground. The, la the winner will be the last man remaining in the ring and will get a shot at the Intercontinental Championship in three weeks' time on Superstars. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. And the match gets a 63. It goes just over 20 minutes. It's a big battle royale. Your, con your contenders are the Smoking Guns, the Beverly Brothers, the Nasty Boys, Brooklyn Brawler, The Natural Disasters, The Head Shrinkers, The Powers of Pain, IRS, Repo Man, Rick Martel, Tatanka, The Genius, and The Mountie. And it and so we've got the Mountie and the Nasty Boys teaming up. Obviously you've got the guns gonna team up, the Beverly Brothers, the Natural Disasters, Powers of Powers of Pain and the Head Shrinkers start to team up a little bit, as we know, because we've been teasing that team. So, the first person eliminated is Repo Man. He is the first one out. Bit of a comedy spot. We then lose some of the Beverly Brothers. They both go out soon. Brooklyn Brawler goes out early. Uh, ha Haku, no, Fatu and Samu go out pretty early. IRS. Rick Martel doesn't last long. Warlord Typhoon goes out. Both smoking guns. Jerry sags. And it leaves us with a final four. Of Haku. Jerry sags. No, Brian Nobbs is the one who gets eliminated. Earthquake. And the Mountie. Jerry sags and the Mountie still teaming up as part of Hart, Jimmy Hart's faction. And they are talking... And as such, Earthquake and Haku are forming an uneasy partnership. Tries to turn on Earthquake after they've taken down Jerry Sags and 
the Mountie, but Earthquake overpowers him, picks him up, and tosses him over the top rope. Which leaves the Mountie, Earthquake, and Jerry Sachs. Jerry, S Jerry Sachs and Mountie quickly stumble up to their feet, see the position they're in, both dive at Earthquake, who just swats them away. The Mountie rolls underneath the rope, leaving Earthquake and Jerry Sag. Earthquake picks up Jerry Sags and starts pushing him over the ring, over the ropes, but just Ma Earthquake's just holding on. The Mount, uh, Jerry Sags even is just holding on. And the Mountie just comes from behind, picks up, uh, grabs Earthquake's legs and just tosses him out of the ring, taking Jerry Sags with him, leaving the Mountie the winner of the 20 man battle royale and the match is confirmed we get a quick promo with the Hart family it will be the Mountie versus Bret Hart 2 because see they had a match I think it was also on Superstars earlier this year at the around the Rumble but Mountie versus Bret Hart 2 will happen at Superstars on week 4 great stuff We then get a Sergeant Slaughter's boot camp segment. One of my first personal favourite things to book at the moment is this boot camp. The early Tough Enough, the early NXT. And it is a bench press challenge with Block A. The block which won at Saturday Night Main Event. And Sergeant Slaughter announces that as they've won, all four members of Block A will get a bonus point. With Glenn Jacobs getting a second bonus point for scoring the pin. This was announced after the match. This was not put in before the match. Because otherwise you'd be get that situation where the, they're teammates but they can't, they're fighting all for themselves. Because they want that bonus point. That wasn't announced before. That's just announced as an afterwards. And this we've got a bench press challenge. So one rep max that... They're in a sort of out, out store, outdoor gym. It kind of looks like what you see in the prison gyms in the movie. And they've got a bench press. A bench with, with, the, with the bars on, around it and a stack of weights either side. And they're going to keep going until they're on a one rep max until they can't do it anymore. They keep taking turns. It's Riggs, then Jarrett, then Jacobs, then Lawler. The first to drop out is Brian Lawler. Jarrett follows shortly after. Riggs and Jacobs keep going for a while before Riggs drops out. And Jacobs just needs to get one more to pick up the victory, which he does. And Glenn Jacobs wins. Challenge two, after winning the bonus point from the Saturday Night Main Event match. Not too bad. It's an 88 rating. Slaughter and Oakland are great mics to have. They're giving these guys so much pelt. And it's great fun. We get a quick squash match, guys, just over a minute. I can pretty much run through the entire match here. Yeah. Shawn Michaels taunting to the crowd, doing his sort of hair flicks, Walker barely acknowledging, being acknowledged, he's just standing in the other corner bobbing around, Walker just then suddenly, when Shawn Michaels does face Walker, Walker just charges at him and gets caught straight into a teardrop suplex. Shawn Michaels does his kip up and just starts hopping around the ring like he does. It's taunting. Waits for Chris Walker to get up. Wha bang. Slaps the leg. Sweet chin music. Gets a victory in literally just over a minute. I wouldn't have even booked it for that long. I'd have probably put this for just 40 seconds. It's two moves to put down Chris Walker. It's a massive squash. Not too bad though. And Shawn Michaels gets a quick promo after the match. And he's talking about how 
He has his eyes set on the Intercontinental Championship. But he's going to be selfish about this. He actually wants Bret Hart to win. He doesn't want the Mountie to win. Because... Bret's so much fun to wind up. I can have fun with Bret. I don't know if I can with the Mountie. Me and the Horsemen, we already are having fun with Bret. Bret's our little plaything. That's all he is to us. And eventually... He is going to fall to the superstar of the 90s, the future of pro wrestling, Shawn Michaels. Just a few extra nicknames which I've thrown in for Shawn Michaels, which I think are pretty fitting. The superstar of the 90s is what he's calling himself and the future of pro wrestling. Ironically, you could argue that both of those are true in real life. They just never, just never called them. We get a quick match here, another one, and it's the return of High Voltage. Coco Beware and Owen Hart come out to this match and they fight like men possessed. They're going full on, like, they're still happy-go-lucky, but they are savage with their attacks. They aren't taking any prisoners with the Bushwhackers. Bushwhackers try to do a bit of comedy, but they just get shut down. And at the end, it's Owen who get, hits the missile drop kick while Coco is holding Luke for the victory. And after the match, they look at the camera and they and they gesture around, gesture around their waist that they want the titles. We get a backstage promo here. You heard I announced earlier that one of the announced matches was Yokozuna. Versus Max Moon. And this is essentially. Mm, us that match. Because it's not actually going to happen. Well. Maybe. Because. It's, it's announced that Max Moon is not cleared to fight Yokozuna. After the bonsai drop he took. On Saturday night's main event. Max Moon will not be cleared. And it's Miss Fujigun just laughing. And announcing that the match has been rescheduled. For next week. A vignette here. And it's essentially. The Road Warriors. Return to WWF. Next week. They've been. Sort of. Going around, they, they've not been around for a while. They've been on... I put them on holiday because I didn't need them. They started to save as tag champs, lest we forget. But, they're not here. They've not been here for a while because the storyline didn't need them to be. Especially with the whole stuff with the Heart Foundation randomly winning the titles when that wasn't planned. But, you know, this whole Miracle Violence Collection story was not planned to happen yet. But... Roper is going to be back next week and they're going to be inserting themselves straight in that title picture, I'm sure. With High Voltage also look seemingly after the champs. We get Ric Flair versus the British Bulldog. It goes almost 19 minutes. It's a very good, it's a good match. It's 78. Flair gets an 86, a 59 for Bulldog, which is a little disappointing. Let's be honest. But the finishing sequence is, is as simple as this. It's Bulldog hits the overhead press on Ric Flair. And he and then he and he picks him up and he's going for the power slam. And he and he sort of stands up back, stands back towards the edge of the ropes, getting ready to run and do his power slam. And as he's running, Lex Luger pops up onto the apron. And grabs Ric Flair's feet. Pulling him down. Bulldog starts yapping. At Luger. Flair sort of stumbles into the middle of the ring. The referee comes over. The referee of course in this match is. Danny Davis. The former corrupt. Oh, so Bulldog's had a lot of experience with him. Starts, starts talking to Luger. Goes to kick him out. 
And behind the referee's back, flares on his knees and hits Bulldog with a low blow. Gets him up, which takes him down onto the floor. Flair locks in the figure four and eventually Bulldog has to tap. So we keep Bulldog strong to distraction finish. I didn't actually set it in the game. I thought I had. Apparently I didn't. I forgot about that. My bad. We then get a promo segment from Block B. They're in their training room and it's said that this was taped after Saturday night's main event. Or during, even during the show, whilst the rest of the show is going on. These guys in their locker room. After their match. And they're chatting and essentially, it's Paul Levesque, Sean Morley and Chris Canyon annoyed at Duke Drozzi. Because they lost and they don't get any points. And that's going to jeopardise them now. When the first elimination comes around. There's not much... There's not much really that they can do when one of their teammates... They, they all blame him. Duke Drosy was also the weakest here in this promo segment. Everyone else was pretty good at improvising. I mean, Canyon was superb. But, at the end of the day, what can you do? And the main event... Sees Hogan versus Terry Gordy. Oh, and Savage and Gorilla Monsoon work really well at commentary. That's good. Gets an 86. It goes 17 minutes, 44, and Hogan wins. But the finishing sequence goes like this. Hogan stumbling around like it's been a pretty back and forth match. Terry Gordy runs against the ropes. Smacks Hogan with his torpedo lariat. Sort of just crowd saying that he's about to pin the WWF World Champion. Gets him up. Hits the human torpedo, which is of course his standing drop kick. Goes for the pin. Hogan kicks out a one. Hulks up. Takes the punches to the face. Hulk starts punching back. Runs against the ropes. Big boot. Gordy goes down. Stumbles back up to his feet. Body slam. Runs the ropes. Big leg drop. One, two, three. Hogan wins. An 86. Great match. 86 for Hogan. 74 for Gordy. Gordy has been a... Gordy and Williams have been a great signing for us. As I said earlier, they weren't supposed to be this high up the card straight away. But I'm glad they are now because they've actually been really good. Yeah, it was supposed to be... So my original plans for Mania were Money Inc. Versus to be in the Miracle Violence Connection situation and the Miracle Violence Connection to be where Haku and the Barbarian were against High Voltage. That was the original plan. But in the end, we just moved Miracle Violence Connection up to the main event and they have been excelling, both in the tag team main event and, as we're showing here, as actual main eventers. Like, Dr. Death Steve Williams just main evented our last big event, which was on pay-per-view in some regions. And our final segment sees Heart and Warrior come out as the sort of babyface team which has been forming over the last weeks against the Horsemen. It's the Horsemen who come out on the, onto the stage. And Flair starts chatting through. And he says, Bret Hart, what is the issue with you? You are just boring. No one cares. You've got no charisma. No one cares to see you. Whereas Shawn Michaels is the future of the World Wrestling Federation. He's the future of pro wrestling. He is the, the superstar of the 90s. Warrior, you are just a spectacle. No one, no one will actually care about you. You're fun to cheer when you come out. But as soon as you enter that ring, you let them all down. Whereas Lex Luger is the pinnacle of humanity. Hogan, you are the past. You don't have it anymore. You, you had this crowd in the palm of your hands, but you're losing them. Whereas I am the greatest 
mind wrestling has ever seen. You may have beaten me and Luger at Saturday night's main event. But Michaels wasn't even on the card. And as a three-man group, there is nobody stronger than the Horsemen. So at Saturday night's main event, 31, the Horsemen challenge you three, Hogan, Hart and Warrior, to a six-man tag. Oh, and Hart, you can't even escape this one because your Intercontinental title match is on Superstars. So you don't get to hide from us again like you did last time. And that's how the show ends. With the Horsemen and the Babyfaces staring off. You get, you get a little nod from Hogan and Hart, pretty much saying that, yeah, you know what, they accept the match. It's a 100 rating, great promo. We've got a couple of dark matches. Yokozuna picks up a win against Mabel. Most of these dark matches are just people who are local, who I recognise. I thought, hell, oh, they'll be fun to get in, see how good they are at this point. Yokozuna versus Mabel. Mabel gets a 23. Dreadful. 45 for Yokozuna. Big victory. Big man versus big man. El Matador defeats Papa Shango by disqualification when Shango uses Mist. Gets 42 rating. Not too bad. And the technical main event sees the Legion of Doom. We announced they were returning next week. On TV, they will. They're getting a dark match here just to get them back into the ring. And they beat the future Harlem Heat. When Animal pins Booker T with the Doomsday device. It's a 41, a 62 for both Road Warriors and a 35 for Booker T and a 37 for Stevie Ray. There's potential in those two. They may end up being bought in. And we get a 87 overall. Great stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed it though. Because that's what's more important. I don't care about what the game says. The game could tell me that this was a 2 rated show. As long as you guys enjoy it. Hey, the game may even tell me it's an 87. And you might say, eh, it was a bit crap. That's what's important. You are my audience. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.